Dateline, HOB, Predators are at large. I'm Chris Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you have a seat right over there? <laughs> this podcast is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Spoiler warning for whatever is in the title of this episode. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher, and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that the Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, and all other major podcast apps. Welcome to a very special bonus episode of the Horror of Babylon, where we discuss Prey. P-R-E-Y, not P-R-A-Y, which you cannot do in schools in America. I am Ryan. With me, as always, is Daniel Thunder. Say hello, Daniel Thunder. I prefer a thunderhead. <laughs> and our co-host, who is 116th Cherokee. Hi, Hef. Oh, so he's every white person in America? That's just what I hear from them. Come back when you're 116th Comanche. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to drain 116th of your blood, find a Comanche person, take 116th of their blood, and eat it. Or you can just blow one. We should just start this episode over. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking it's of fine, I'm authentic. It's good. Speaking of people who should probably start over with their choices, thank you to our patrons, including Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and Logan, the, the Full, Full Metal, Metal patron. patron, and Ben, and the, the Fourth Patron, patron of, of Hope, Hope, and May the Fifth, the Rainmaker. She makes it rain, yo. With a rain dance. And Sierra the Sixth. <laughs> 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 All, all, all we're missing now is no. <laughs> Thank you to Full Horseman Comics and Gaming, um, which you can visit on the Great Plains or in the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mall at Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can shop online at fullhorseman.tcgplayerpro.com. And if you want. <laughs> I'm just making. Why, why does everything sound so much more. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> oh my god. He's the bald guy behind the counter with the glasses. Ronald the Third, Grampus of Christmas. <laughs> uh, trigger warning, violence on animals. If you don't like watching animals get killed, seriously, don't watch this movie. French people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, there for, are for, French people. For, half, for like half of a minute. <laughs> hey, and they were not so great. <laughs> they weren't. Mostly. It, you got. There's a little sympathy with Raphael, but... He's always been my least favorite turtle. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. By far. In in like every iteration, he's my least favorite. He's the triggered turtle. Yeah. I mean, like as a kid, it's Michelangelo was always my favorite. As an adult, I, I've really appreciate learned to appreciate a uh, Leo and Donnie. But I mean, Raph's just a he's just a hothead. He's just a dick most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the every, best. Part. Every iteration you have of him, he's just kind of a dick. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite line of his in the uh, in the newest one is, Every night I dream about fighting! <laughs> As do we Comanche warriors. <laughs> Alright, our history with Prey and also just, you know, I'm Predator. Um, I think Daniel and I talked a little bit about that in our AVP episode, but Hef wasn't there, so... He wasn't. He wasn't. So let's let Hef kick it off. I have, like, actual zero experience with Predator and or prey. You never saw the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? I, I knew of it, but I never watched it. Mm. Um, it was just one of those movies that never, I mean, it just never came across my screen at any point when I was younger. 
Um, I w- I watched this movie without actually knowing it was a part of the Predator franchise. Oh, that sounds so cool. <laughs> I wish I did. <laughs> the, this movie was thrown out to me by a co-worker who just all they kept telling me was it was really good, but they didn't tell me that it was a Predator film because they expected me to know it was a Predator film Yeah, because yeah. it was just one of those things. I mean, you're a nerdy guy. That's, yeah. that's a fair assumption. That's a fair, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. So I went... And it, no, I didn't. You you had it for you had it for me, and I took it home and watched it because I was just like, ah, hey, yeah, that's a. I, I generally like to watch like movies about like with Native Americans because you know while I'm not you know a huge huge part of the culture, it is still something that I like to try to like familiarize myself with and you know get to do with. So I went into this movie actually thinking it was a Indian tale about a spirit. That maybe would actually give me a little bit of I saw the about Thunderbird. The I thought it was a Comanche tale yeah. when I first went into it, and then I saw the Predator, and it clicked <laughs> that that's the Predator. And I'm like, this movie just opened up a whole new brand of weird plot twist that I was not ready for. And then I proceeded to watch the rest of the movie because I was like, it was only a plot twist to you. It was a hundred percent only a plot twist to me. Everybody plot, else was waiting for the predator to the, show up. The plot twist of the movie was the predator showed up for me and then it fought the bear. Yeah, it did fight a bear. Um, it, if you, if you've listened to our, our alien a thon in our AVP episodes, you'll know that, I'm not a fan of the the Predator franchise. Um, I am a fan of this movie, though. Uh, this is the first Predator movie I, I've seen that was just was like, wow, that didn't suck. <laughs> uh, this movie is pretty good. I, I had it's not perfect. I have I have some issues with it, but overall, I think this movie rocks. Um, although I did have one big issue with it starting out, because but it was my fault and I'm stupid, which. <laughs> I'll explain later. Okay, can't wait. Uh, I followed the movie news for a while because they announced they were doing a new Predator movie. I was like, oh, how are they going to fuck it up this time? And because I live in the modern age where people can't just, you know, be civil and, like, try to see what someone's going for, the first piece of discourse I saw, the main character's a woman, it's woke. And I was like, great, this is what I get to hear for the next six months. So is GTA 6. Yeah. So I got to rock stars woke. <laughs> so I got to hear that for like however many months, and then I saw the trailer. And I was like, hey, that looks that, that looks decent, and I saw. It, I was like, that uh, Predator movie. Um, I do think that a lot of the people who were like really on the movie's dick were suffering a little bit from recency by, bias because they're like, this is the best Predator movie, or it's the first good Predator movie since Predator. And I was like, this is the third best Predator movie. <laughs> Predator, I like Predator too. Save, like, one thing. To be fair, I only made it five minutes into Predator 2. So, I watched Predator in high school, Mm -hmm. and, like, the intent was, like, the person who showed me Predator was like, all right, we're going to watch Predator, and then we're going to watch Predator 2. So, I sat through Predator, and then they put in Predator 2 in five five minutes, and I said, no, we're not. (laughs) (laughs) A a Jamaican gangster warlord pulls a sword on a Predator in that movie, and I love it. (laughs) I, when you said Jamaican gangster warlord, I thought you were talking about the Predator. No. <laughs> Actually, wait, he might have been Haitian because he was doing voodoo. Mm. I also thought that was the Predator. And he just pulls out, like he sees the Predator walking towards him and he pulls out a sword and his sword has like a little shrunken skull head on it. And I'm like, oh, this is hype. I love that movie. It has Donald Glover in it and I love him. I did think this movie was really good and every time I heard Ryan say he hates the Predator movies, I was like, I think you'll like this one. I do. I think it has stuff in here that specifically appeals to you. So yeah. I wanted him to try this movie. No, I, I did like this movie. This movie is good. The vampires are pure myth, superstition. I may be able to bring you proof that the superstition of yesterday can become the scientific reality of today similar to our the only good indians in uh pet cemetery episodes uh we're doing a piece of media that's uh kind of hyper focused on a well pet cemeteryism but that's more tangential but is on a particular tribe of indigenous people so i thought just like those episodes we would kick it off with some factoids about the real people in this case 
the Comanche Nation. So the Comanche are a Native American tribe from the Southern Plains. Present day United States, <clears throat> the Comanche people today belong to the federally recognized Comanche Nation, which is headquartered in Layton, Oklahoma, which is why Hank has never visited. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the Comanche lived in what is present day northwestern Texas and the adjacent areas of eastern New Mexico, southeastern Colorado, southwestern Kansas, and western Oklahoma. The Comanche practiced nomadic horse culture and hunted primarily bison, unless there were Frenchmen about, in which case they didn't get so much bison. Um, the Comanche were known for being very warlike as uh, European settlers moved west. They participated in a lot of uh, raids on European settlers and other Native American or indigenous tribes that uh, cooperated with the European settlers. And they also were known to uh, take captives during warfare and then take them to Mexico and sell them to the Spanish as slaves. Or in some cases, they would also adopt them into their own tribe. Uh, due to diseases brought by European settlers, the destruction of the buffalo herds by European settlers and territory that they have lost, the Comanches were basically pushed on to, uh, quote unquote, Indian reservations by the late 1870s. In the current century, the Comanche Nation has 17,000 members, around 7,000 of which who live in tribal jurisdictions around Lawton, Oklahoma, and the surrounding area. And that are some factoids about the real Comanche people. And we will buy back our land. Yeah. Poor John Redcorn. <laughs> uh, talking background on Prey itself, Prey premiered at San Diego Comic-Con on July 21st, 2020, and as a streaming movie, it then went on to be available on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. The title, Prey, was announced on Disney Plus Day in 2021. This is the fifth film in the mainline Predator series. It is the seventh film in the overall franchise, counting the two Alien vs. Predator movies. It is a prequel to the first four films. It is directed by Dan Trachtenberg. It is his second film, second and most recent film, so one of two, the first being 10 Cloverfield Lane, though Dan does have a, a bigger resume when it comes to television. He has been a various roles in television series such as Black Mirror, The Boys, The Lost Symbol, which is based on the Dan Brown novel, and he's currently uh, a part of the production team of Stranger Things Season 5. Uh, this movie was written by Patrick Eisen. This is the only screenplay that Patrick has been credited with writing, but like Dan also has a bigger career in television, has worked on series such as Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan, Kingdom, and Wayward Pines. The movie was filmed on the lands of the Stony Nakoda First Nation in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It was shot in English and later dubbed by the cast fully in the Comanche language. It's the first film to have a full Comanche language dub. Both language versions are available in Comanche and English on Hulu and on Disney+. Uh, the film development began production when uh, The Predator was being made, and producer John Davis was approached by Dan Trachtenberg and Patrick Eisen, who had been working on this concept together since 2016. Damn. <laughs> uh, Dan Trachtenberg also said that it was an attempt at giving a full movie to the character, to a character similar to Billy from the original movie. I've seen the original movie, but I don't remember who Billy is. Can you, can you enlighten us on that? Is that Arnold's name? Because I just call him Arnold. I don't think so. I think he was called Dutch. Because he had his own full movie yeah. in Predator. Hold on. Billy. <laughs> Pred. Uh, <laughs> Be careful what you throw in there. Oh, he was. Oh, he was the Native American character. Native American. Char I think he was played by a Hispanic guy, but he was the oh. na Native American character in the first Predator that's the, movie. That's about the same. That's fine. He pulled out a big buck knife. He's not white. <laughs> <laughs> He's not white. And was like, I, I'll 
I'll, I'll stand that's, my ground here against the. Pressure. I was gonna say that's that's really you know that's what I do on my front porch to people just to send the message. Anyone think Curry. Billy from Predator might be a descendant of Naru in her tribe? <laughs> oh my god! And that's that. Another story in the classic, infallible three-act structure. Good enough for Aristotle. Good enough for the Simpsons. Mr. Sislak, I have a feeling there's going to be one more act to this story. Well, I'm not hanging around for that. Four acts. Structure and themes. This question probably won't go long, but what are your thoughts on the structure of the film? Pretty straightforward. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Let's keep going. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, it's not It's, it's, it's not a complicated movie. It, yeah, it's not a David Fincher movie. I would say that in terms of... It's a complicated and detailed movie in terms of its production, but in terms of its story... It's very straightforward. Very simple. It's, here's this tribe, an alien shows up. Yeah. Uh, it's, this is a weirdly pretty movie. Mm -hmm. Like, that was... With a, a couple exceptions, yes. Well, yeah, but it's like... very green. Well, that's the thing. Like, the, the, the shots that, like, are literally just, like... I guess landscape. Like, there's a lot of landscape in this movie. Well, it it Canada, it's Canada, and Canada is like the prettiest country. And yeah, and it's Earth. just it looks. It just. I don't know. So for it, maybe it, New just had, it just had a calming color tone. I guess if mm -hmm. that makes any sense at all. No, it's very pretty. Yeah. Um, while we're on color tone, I was wondering. I meant to look this up, but I didn't. Do you think that they digitally made those orange flowers like more orange? I I, I would guess so because. Hiya! Happy Easter! A lot of the like colors in this movie, <coughs> when they want them to, they really jump up. Like mm -hmm. I always associate like green with this movie because of mm -hmm. the green face paint and the green blood. But they really make sure it sticks out, especially in the posters and stuff. Yeah, that I thought so as well. But I also thought, well, maybe it's just because like all the other colors are kind of dull until until and that's also possible so. but um, they're like so orange that i thought like that has to be digital it's like fire yeah yeah all right so daniel how does this film mesh with the predator canon uh doing prequels is a great way to make things mesh with canon you know uh like how i talked about in the uh alien versus predator movies how that can sometimes create these like tiny little nitpicky conflicts mm -hmm. well with this it's just like a different predator showed up in a different place and just did the predator thing. They they weren't like adding to their lore, or their culture. They just did the movie in a different spot. So I actually kind of justified it in my head in a way that it did add to it. Yeah. So if you think about the first Alien versus Predator thing, they had that temple in South in Antarctica mm -hmm. where they would send their teenage predators to do their test. Yeah. But if predators. But eventually <laughs> like Hansen. like there was like a there was like a, a I forget exactly how the movie explains it but like something bad happened and that temple they stopped using it. Uh, because the, there an alien outbreak happened so they yeah. had to blow blow everything up. So what I was thinking like this maybe like this movie happened shortly after that, and this is one of the first batch of teenage predators who's going out to do his test, his trial, but he no, they no longer have that temple, so he has to just get like army dropped off to this random wilderness place on Earth. So I don't know. That's just kind of how I made it. Okay. Mesh in my head. Predator Hunger Games. Teenagers killing teenagers. Battle Royale. They don't give a shit. <laughs> All right. Um, so themes, uh, obviously, Comanche culture is a big one. One of the producers is a, of Comanche heritage, and supply, uh, supplied a lot of uh, primary document resources from his tribe for the production team to use. Um, and obviously, the it was dubbed in Comanche. Um, so that's that's a big thing. Yeah, this movie did a weird thing where like it does feel like it does, and this might sound a little bad. It doesn't fall into like a the woke trap. Like it is kind of a woke movie. Like it's very aware that it's like being culturally relevant and culturally sensitive. Yeah, yeah. she's a girl boss. But she's but but this is like the best kind of execution. She's a badass girl yeah, boss, right? Like this is like the best kind of execution of female empowerment plus like positive culture boost. There's not this moment where she turns to the camera 
and kind of winks and goes, see, boys, I can do it, too. Kind of, yeah, I mean, It's way. very, they do the story, and they tell the story, and they let the character speak for herself. Hmm. Yeah. Like, I think that's that's the big reason that I like this movie, is it, it doesn't feel... It's it, it's giving you a message, but it's not forcing it on you. And I almost felt like they were anticipating a lot of it, mm -hmm. because everything that she does to win in The Predator is just things that other people in other Predator movies did to win. Mm -hmm. So, like, we don't have her, like, overpower him. We don't have her win with muscle strength. They're like, mud, setting traps. And so anytime someone complains, they're like, did you watch the first Predator movie? Because that's how Ar Arnold couldn't physically fight the thing. Mm. He had to use mud and traps. So, okay, so here's a question I had, because yeah. I, I haven't seen the original movie in, like, 15 years. Yeah. And I don't remember it coming up in the AVP movies. Are all Predators, like, that physically strong that they can, like, nothing throw a bear over their heads? And They never showed something like a bear, but, like, when... Uh, Arnold and the uh, Predator were like having their show off at the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, the Predator basically looked at him, took off all of his weapons, and then just beat the shit out of him for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then it was a trap that Arnold had set that managed to like get the Predator because he was just so physically... No, at first he was technologically outmatched, but he was also physically unmatched. Mm -hmm. So he had to use like brains in order to finally figure out what the thing was and then beat it. Which is what she does in this movie. Yeah. So, so I almost felt like that was anticipated. So in the other Predator movies, there's not a similar feat of strength to lift bench pressing a bear? Not to bench pressing a bear. Okay. I think uh, mostly they focus, like the er, like the first two Predator movies mostly focused on their tools. Mm -hmm. like, like the stealth. Like mm. the stealth and like the nets that could cut people up. Uh, da Donald Glover does beat a Predator in a physical fight, but that's after like a bunch of shit happens. So... Mm -hmm. It's hard to put that scene in the context without going on a, what do you call it, a tirade? Tirade? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Osh, invasion of white settlers, uh, because literally that is happening where the the French hunters and trappers are, are setting bear traps, which are affecting the Comanche people, and they're killing the buffalo which is the food source of the Comanche people and they're wasting the meat they're they're just taking but then also you could you could also see the predator itself as a real easy and obvious allegory for european settlers sup everybody <laughs> don't worry be happy the girl who cried wolf yeah no that 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 makes sense in this case she was actually seeing something yeah but it is very hey i'm trying to point this thing out to you people there's a monster there's a monster mm. No, there's not. <laughs> you did not see the Thunderbird. <laughs> just, just, for spirits, like I love that, like in a you know, like thing where I'm like, you know, for for a tribe of people that would be on the spiritual side of belief, you're awful quick to dismiss this girl. I did feel. I don't really feel. Like, I don't really feel comfortable like calling this out <laughs> as a real criticism because I just don't know. But I did feel like some of these indigenous characters felt a little modern. Yeah. But... No, I agree with that. Like, mm -hmm. it was kind of a modern... Like... I, if Again, like, Native American, like, I don't have the depth of knowledge of things like that. But I do know they're very spiritual people. Mm -hmm. And I'm... I've been to a reservation. And they are. Everything's very... It's not in your face, really. It's like, more like one with everything kind mm -hmm. of deal. And they don't... You don't have like. Did any of the mock you a pig leaf? <clears throat> no, I accidentally drank peyote. Okay. That's for another day, though. Damn um, boys. <laughs> but yeah, there were there were points of this movie where I felt like for you know a, a tribe of Comanche people back then that were you know kind of one with the world and kind of holistic about it to just outright say I had a vision. Of or I saw this entity that we are very close to, or supposed to be very. Close and then to, to just be like, and then they're just like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Yeah, yeah like that, I, that felt a little out of place. Yeah, I agree. Um, but again, like, I'm not going to say that it's not possible that there were some skeptics in that time and era. <clears throat> yeah. Like, it's certainly possible. Well, and you know, with and it also came from a girl. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, a woman wouldn't have a vision. It's like, it's like. A, a, um, a great it's like Peg Peggy Hill oh, says. Now, why would an angel come to Luann when I'm right here in the house? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
I can see that as a mentality too. <laughs> Where she asks, asks the monk after Bob Bobby chooses Connie in the mirror, and she asks the monk, "Should I take the test?" <laughs> <laughs> If you ever want to laugh really hard, just make Emma watch a Peggy episode. She hates Peggy. So That's what much. we should stream. <laughs> <laughs> she hates it. We'll so do much. a watch along Peggy episodes. Okay. Um uh, David versus Goliath. We we already yeah. we already kind of talked about the and technology versus ingenuity kind of runs rampant in the Predator. I also wrote down Brain versus Braun, but that just goes yeah. along with the David versus Goliath thing. Yeah, I mean they're coming to get you, Barbara. Characters, there's a lot, but I only wrote down four. I think the four that really matter. So Amber Midthunder plays Naru. I really wish I was born on Cherokee Reservation so <laughs> that I could have a cool last name like Midthunder. I mean, you can go to the courthouse and change your name. But that's so much less cool than being born to it. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. <laughs> but I mean, you could also end up with a, like I know I've heard like a famous uh, indigenous American character from literature was named Lame Beaver. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. I'd go there like they just like okay, you must like you know. You, know, you don't pick your name. Your name is chosen for you. And you are like, wounded you, deer. You, <laughs> you are broke bitch. <laughs> you are beaver has no cave kind of shit. Like that would be me. Lodgeless beaver. Lodgeless That's beaver. <laughs> that would be. Oh god. Uh, I yeah. like Naru. I lo I love her. Yeah, I yes. think she's fantastic. I, I like every time she came up against an obstacle, she used her brains to like come up with a creative solution, or she fucked up till it worked. Yeah, <laughs> that's the big thing I really liked is like I they, try again. <laughs> well, that's just it. Like it's not even just it's a kind of an empowerment movie. It's also a. It's more of like her growing not as, even just as a person but as a warrior and they do that by showing she fucks up yeah and I, that's something i just don't think a lot of like movies like this do like it's just here you're either a badass or you're not what i liked is that so it opens and she's throwing that tomahawk and you kind it kind of makes you think oh yeah she's she's really good she's a really good talented hunter and warrior but then you as it goes you start thinking to yourself is she actually a strong hunter and warrior? And you don't really get a sense of it until she fights the French dudes. Um, because, like, she she gets in bad situations and bad shit happens, and you're like, okay, did she actually fuck up, or is this just the situation that she's having trouble with? And, and I kept going back and forth. Maybe she's actually not good at being a hunter, and she's going to learn that her medicine is her actual calling and she's going to use the medicine somehow to defeat the predator which is half true mm -hmm. um and then the other half was me like no she is really good at this stuff but she's just kind of coming into her own and stepping out of her brother's shadow this movie's deeper than what i would have expected it to be like i feel like there's a lot more going on with it than it just being a predator movie and it does it in 99 minutes it does <laughs> That's another thing I like about this movie is it's not like overly long. <laughs> yeah, and you could see like it being like, oh, it's a historical period piece about uh, the Plains Indians is like, oh, it's at least two and a half hours long. Yeah, like Dances with Wolves is one of the longest movies. And, it's, and instead, what Hef gets is an Indian uh, or Native American tribe that's going to be fighting off a predator, and I'm like, this is a plot twist. I love this. There's a predator. In There's this a movie? predator in this movie. Why does that spirit have dreads? Uh, and I've, I think a very strong performance. Uh, she's she's really good. I looked at her IMDb page. She's in a ton of like CW stuff, which I don't watch. Yeah. So maybe she, I guess maybe she's like well known in like that like realm of television. But I, this is the first thing I've seen her in. Yeah. I think she did a great job. Yeah. She, um, she felt genuine. I liked it. I hope that she gets to be in some more movies so that we can see some more of her. Dakota Beavers. <laughs> what beavers? Dakota Beavers. <laughs> I'm gonna decote your beaver. No, it's, <laughs> that's my name. You you know the of the rules that of which beavers ru live their lives by. It's Dakota Beavers. <laughs> Every beaver 
or every beaver pup has to grow up learning Dakota beavers. So it they took can... me a second. I got there. <laughs> I think I think, uh, I think in regards to the number of puns this evening, I think we should re redub you as leave it to beavers. <laughs> Please. Ward. Lord you, Beavers. Ward, you were a little hard on the beaver last <laughs> night. It's my dad's favorite joke of all time. <laughs> of course get, it is. I need to get that as a clip. <laughs> uh, I, I liked her brother. I, I like that he. they could have just made that character like a total asshole. And he does have that like moment where he tells her she can't do it, which is a, is a dick thing. But you also like understand like where he's coming from and like she she went on a hunt and she fell out of a fucking tree and he had to carry her back he's he's being a big brother he's trying to look out for her i killed a lion you didn't do shit <laughs> yeah like you understand where he's coming from but he's he's still like putting her down and telling her she can't do something but it's also a very uh gender classed like society men do this and women do that. We will call you Naru Falling Leaf <laughs> for falling out of tree. Ah, um, uh, that was bad. The, the, it, the relationship felt good too. Like it, like there is, like, yeah, there's definitely some class kind of. There's definitely some class like separation, but like between the two of them, like they're still brother and sister, and it, it's 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 genuine. And, and you it feels can, good. and you can see like in the interactions with the the other uh, members of the tribe including their mother that he gives her more of a chance than anyone else does mm. including their mother and you yes. have to think about like how many years has he been dealing with this before the movie started yeah and and he's he's lived in a world where men go out and hunt and women don't and she wants to hunt i want to throw tomahawks yeah which she ooh, she can do um and i also thought he was a really good performance. I thought it was super obvious he was going to die from the beginning. Uh, I was like, oh, that guy's going to die. Yeah, but I thought he had a pretty good death. That was a pretty good scene. He went out yeah. swinging, though. Yeah, yeah, like they didn't just... He He's the only one who went hand-to-hand -hand with the Predator and didn't immediately die. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was killed, but he's the only one who gave it any kind of fight in a straight, like, hand-to-hand -hand fight. The first time that, like, the, the Predator kills... I again like didn't know Predator stuff was coming over like that, and then he just like, pfft, and it's just like the guy's like gored to death. I'm like, oh my god! So much of this movie I was not ready for because I had no idea what it was going in, which made this so much more fun of a watch. Dane Delegro. Something I like about watching these movies is always finding out what the credited name of the like the one from AVP two was Wolf. This one is the Feral Predator. Yeah, because it looks feral. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, uh, this is your your time to shine. Tell us how the feral predator falls in among the pantheon of predators. Pretty good. He seems to be a fan favorite right now. Uh, a lot of people were talking about how they like how he still had advanced technology, but it still looked kind of shitty compared to what predators have like hundreds of years into the future. Because he was a teenager, he got secondhand shit. Yeah. So like he was going around with like portable shields and mm -hmm. like... So people were comparing, like, oh, and you can see that this will be the evolution of the plasma cannon. and mm -hmm. So you got to hear about a bunch of stuff like that. But he looked super cool, so everybody loves him. And they're like, oh, I want I want a figurine of this. And now there's a figurine of him, so... Kind of leaner yeah. than, than the other Predators. He's leaner, but he can bench a lot more. <laughs> Bear. Maybe all the other Predators can bench whales, they just don't show it off. Yeah, they're like, come on, dude. <laughs> it's a bear. Nobody <laughs> likes to see you weightlifting in the street, Kyle. His name's Kyle now. He's he's the he's the Kyle Predator who goes to the gym and he like benches 150 and he has a big dick about it. <laughs> he go, goes in front of the mirror after he benches once. <laughs> oh, God. What's your protein intake, bro? <laughs> That's pretty funny. What's that? I weigh I weigh 175 pounds. I take in no less than 200 grams. Okay, so Hef, I guess this is your first time with a actual predator. What do you think of the predator himself? Feral predator, like, is a good word for that. Because like, I, I thought it was kind of, I thought it was kind of cat looking, like in a sense, like because it was real lean and real sleek looking. Anytime I have seen a predator in any sort of way, like it was always like this big, like kind of cybernetic thing. And this one's just not built like that, and which made it very 
interesting to actually watch how it interacted with how, like, the actual tribe had to, like, be able to fight it. So it, it seemed like something that was real, just kind of wild. I liked that a lot. So it, it was kind of like they were hunting it, but it was hunting them. And its design, I think, is very key to that. I also really liked how it started with, like, really small things. Mm -hmm. Like, it started with a rattlesnake and then a, a wolf or a coyote or something. Mm -hmm. And then a bear, and it's then like, oh, people have sticks. This will be fun. But it's working its way up the food chain. <laughs> yeah. And it's always after it, like, notices them doing something. So it's like, ooh, that, that thing, that thing's a predator, just like me. I thought it was a little awkward. Like, I, I understood what they were going for. Like, it's so still and it's so silent that an ant can crawl on it and it won't even notice. And then the rat eats the ant and the rat doesn't even notice it's there. And then the, the rattlesnake eats the rat and it doesn't immediately know. So, like, I understand what they were going for. But it was a little awkward. This this whole literal like, <clears throat> cycle of Watching life is just happening yeah. right there. I was waiting for Scar to come in and say, long live the king. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a circle of life. Coco, Coco. who plays Sorry, who I I'm also so thought sorry. was going to die. Yeah. I, I saw that dog. I was like, that dog is going to die. And the dog didn't die. But the dog also abandoned her several times. <laughs> and the dog knew when to fuck off. <laughs> he's like, he's like, it's a fucking bear. I'm done. He's like, I don't know if you know what a weight class is, Naru. <laughs> they also like, they missed the best joke. So they go off on their own. She kills a bunch of rabbits. They're sitting around the campfire eating rabbits. And she looks at the dog and she says, okay, next time you cook dinner. Then the mud thing happens and the dog is gone. And then she's there, like, washing off, and the dog comes back, and it has a rat. And she, she should have been, like, I like, she should have, like, acknowledged that, like, him being, bringing dinner and said something like, thanks for bringing dinner, but I'm not eating that rat or something. I don't know. I don't know how to do it, but that, that was an opportunity. That's so specific of a thing. <laughs> I know it's here. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> well, I know there's a slingshot in that piece of wood, but I don't have Eddie's whittling skills to to pull the wood, the slingshot out of the wood, but I know it's there. You almost said pull the wood. <laughs> I know the oil is supposed to be in the engine. I just don't know if it actually is, but I know it's supposed to be here. Kill you all! <laughs> I'll drive you crazy and I'll kill you all on every nightmare you ever had. I am your worst dream come true. I'm everything you ever were afraid of. Scary shit. Is this movie scary? Um, no, but um, it's badass. <laughs> no, it's not scary. I got, I cringed a couple times while watching some animals get murdered, but... All right, so effects. Predator looked pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Most of the gore looks pretty decent. Be better than what I would have thought getting a Predator movie out of would have. Again, I, I have the prejudice of not actually seeing a Predator movie before, so I don't know if like the actual violence to people ratio is it, it was, it was, adequate. <laughs> it was pretty up there. The I don't know how fair of a criticism it is, but the, the CG animals looked terrible. They did look terrible. It, it, it's, a fa it's a fair criticism. But, like, Practical with the things they did in the movie, practical animals or real animals wouldn't really have worked. So I guess the only thing is spend more money on your CG, which I don't like saying either. Yeah. Seems like a kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of. But they just they looked really bad. They should have just gotten real bears and, and killed them <laughs> and and real as, lions. as they frequently do on the reservation. Just, Film it in Japan like they did with Milo and Otis. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that movie existed. That is a toss. That is a toss back. They had to film it in Japan because of animal. Japan didn't have as strict animal rights laws as we did. <laughs> they were like, "Fuck these cats." If you if you watch the movie and go to the credits, the entire crew is Japanese. It's like Dud narrated by Dudley Moore, and then it's all Japanese names. Huh. That's a fun fact. Not so fun for the cats. Yeah. <laughs> no. They uh, they do some questionable things to the animals in that movie. I don't remember... A bunch of cats any, died at the making of the movie. No shit. Yeah. Wow. I think a few of the uh, the dogs, too. Probably. But, but yeah. Would they do throw them and shit? Or what? Yeah, like they would throw them in like the ocean for like a 
a shot. Yeah, like of them because the mm. Milo gets swept down the river mm. away from the farm, mm. and then he gets like washed up on a beach. And then if they could get the cat back, they did. And if they couldn't, they were like, "Oh, we have another similar looking cat." Yeah, we've oh, got wow. we've got two hundred orange cats. We're fine. Yeah, that's what, what they did. Yeah, yeah, they also like okay, like my innocence is gone. Here, <laughs> here's a dog. Put the snake in. Put the oh yeah, because like Otis comes up on a snake. snake. That's right. Like, oh my god. There's probably a good YouTube video that explains like the making of that movie. Yeah. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Next week on the Horror of Babylon, the Adventures <laughs> of Milo <laughs> and Otis. Why is it ranked next to Roar? <laughs> Actually, that's maybe not a terrible I, idea. It might be worse yeah. now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, because they're very intentionally like putting domesticated animals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's something we should actually do. We should also make him watch Roar as a drinking game. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do like a live stream reaction to. Like a watch along yeah. of roar. We're gonna do that. You take a drink every time something it, like it looks dangerous happens. <laughs> oh God. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll 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 not drink <laughs> in, until we do that, and then I'll be fashioned. Yeah. I mean, that's how I'm gonna have to do it. So drunk, I made up a word. Just fashioned. keep in mind, I will need I will need a couch to sleep on that night if that's the case. Uh, yeah. It sounds yeah. like that's going to destroy me. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my god, are you Stephen King? No, I'm Dean Koontz. Oh. Kings and Koontz, uh, let's reverse this. Have, what is your king? The absolute spectacle of wandering into my Native American film and getting a Predator movie. Like, I could not have anticipated more of a wild turnaround than that because I just didn't know what I was going to get going in. It was so... That was the funniest thing I've had happen in a while. And my king is Naru. I really like her. My king is also Naru. Just like Keitaro. No. Oh. Uh, and half your coons. <sighs> yeah, it's definitely the CG. Yeah. The animals, like, they were, same, they were same. real bad. Uh, so I was thinking about seeing the CG animals. I was also thinking about saying, the worst part of this Predator movie was the Predator. I just want more of Naru and her tribe. <laughs> but... This Koontz is a lost joke. <laughs> but my my actual Koontz is me, because I'm an idiot. Um, so I was excited to watch this movie, and I was like make trying to make time to watch it because it's subtitled, and I can't like like do something else. I was like, I'm sit and watch it because it's subtitled. Oh, you did you watch it in Comanche? <laughs> So I'm watching, so I, I turned it on and I'm like, and I'm like, oh, this is the first movie that's all in Comanche. I'm super excited. I turn it on and it starts Comanche and then it starts talking in English. I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe it kind of bounces between the two. And it's like all in English, except for just like choice words that are in Comanche. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, Daniel told me this was in Comanche. This is so stupid. Why didn't they just make the whole movie in Comanche? Instead of just like, oh, a little bit of English and just like a Comanche word here and there. And then it gets to the French people and they're all speaking French, except for when they're speaking Comanche, they're speaking English. And I'm like, this is stupid. And then after the movie, I found out there's an English version and there's a Comanche version, <laughs> which I did. Okay. I, I would have chosen to watch the all Comanche version. Yes. <laughs> okay. But. I didn't know that there were two different versions. So my Koontz is me. So you had almost the opposite thing that I did, where you went in with an expectation and got something else. That's yeah. fantastic. Oh boy. That's funny. The fact that it's still good enough, even though you went in with that understanding though. Yeah, I mean like, well, it's because they filmed it in English. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I was watching a bad English dub. Right. It's still one of those weird things where like you expect something and then you don't get that thing though. Yeah, I did, but like the movie is good enough that I didn't let it ruin it for I, me. But yeah. I, th I think, like I said, that's that speaks to the movie itself and like, yeah. that it's actually really good. Is you went in with an already d altered expectation, and it still is like, no, this is still very good. Yeah, stuff like that can ruin movies. Yes, and I will next time I watch it, unless it's with Beck, or because I showed her the trailer and said, hey, this is a good girl power movie for, for Girl Scouts, so <laughs> I might get her to watch it, but. Uh, Unless it's with her, the next time I watch it, I will do the full Comanche version. Cool. Because it just seems like a waste to watch this movie in English, but <laughs> that's me. 
Okay. Um, ranking half. Uh, this one's gonna be pretty high because I enjoyed the shit out of this movie. Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. Is it better? Than oh, the buddy, it's, Pride? it's no. <laughs> it's. Uh, I think it's number two. I think it 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 beats Renfield just barely. Just by enough. It, just by a hair. And again, I think the only way you would switch, you would, I would swap those, probably if I knew about the Predator going into the movie. The very fact that the Predator showed up in the movie was just such a crazy thing to me, and made so much more unique of an experience. I have it as my new number twenty-two, below Prometheus and above the Ghost in the Darkness. Real good, not perfect. Has a few like a, a few like nitpicky things, but pretty good. Man, I really wanted to put it higher, but I, I'm going to have to put it below Reanimator. Yeah, I also had it below Reanimator. It's just, also your number 22. I, I just really like Reanimator. Yeah, it, it, it's hard to deny the appeal of that movie. Yeah. That's my favorite H.P. Lovecraft adaptation. <laughs> it's probably going to stay that way for a while. Yeah, probably. Um, or forever, maybe. Yeah. Homework. What other historical period slash people would you have the Predator visit? I have a feeling that I'm not going to be the only one to pick this. I don't know what you call the era, but whatever time frame Pride and Prejudice was in. Because I just imagine that scene from Futurama where <laughs> they go back into Pride and Prejudice and looks like, Mr. Fry, you're, you're such an oddity, a bachelor at your age. He's like, you think I'm an oddity? What do you see? And then he points, it's a fucking Predator. Um, I have I have experienced Pride and Prejudice with monsters in it. I was not a fan. I think it could be nothing but funny. I just, I, I, what I want is a a prim and proper predator. It's basically just Darcy with a predator head. Yeah. That's what I want. I Pride and Prejudice and zombies ruined me on that. It's a like, tragedy. No, I yeah. I just like get these zombies out of my Pride and Prejudice <laughs> yeah. book. So Which, is that the same dude that did the Vampire Hunter? Yeah. Book? I mean, that's that's on point, though, because, I mean, I feel like the vampires were the worst part of that book. And the, the zombies are the worst part of Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. Hmm. Yeah. At least he has a brand. Yeah. Of course, my brain immediately went to Feudal Japan, but I was like, no, because Daniel's going to choose that, so I'm going to make... <laughs> and my... I also purposely chose something different. So I'm going to make myself do something else. <laughs> um, so I'm going to choose the Crusades, because I'm curious what the modern-day Middle East would look like if there was a predator during the Crusades. Would it be? That, that's how the Dan Brown book starts. <laughs> and then also, I would just want an alternative version of this movie, where there is no predator. Just replace the predator with like a rabid bear and tell the tell the same story. Okay, so you take the movie Zulu, and you replace white people with the predator. <laughs> Zulu versus Predator. I don't think Predator wins. Yeah. <laughs> Zulu. Zulu, Zulu, Zulu. I love that movie. No, I do too. That movie's great. It's the only movie where I was okay watching Michael Caine get massacred. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, further reading. I mean, it's not really related. It's just because... But if you want to see more horror-ish from an indigenous American perspective check out the novels of Seth Stephen Graham Jones. Yeah. They're not re really they're not related to Predator in any way, but it's another it is another perspective. I really want to read his slasher book. Let's do it. Yeah. I mean, I I just want to read another of his books. Yeah. I want to see if I, I like it as much as The Only Good Indians. Yeah. Or is that The Only Good Stephen Graham Jones book? <laughs> Part of me is kind of afraid of that. Yeah. I don't know. He seems like a talented guy. Like, yeah. He's also super nice. He's retweeted us like five times. Yeah, him and uh, Amakatsu, both very uh, nice horror authors that we've interacted with on social media. Uh, Junji Ito has also liked a couple of our tweets. More likely the person who runs Junji Ito's Twitter account. Yeah, has but like I like a... to pretend it's Junji Ito. <laughs> More likely it's his agent, his wife, or one of his kids. Oh, that's great. I Junji mean, still... his wife touched our like button. I mean, that's still, that's <laughs> yeah. still cool. I like the idea that, you're there, that his kid did it, and then she's like, look, it's Squidward. <laughs> <laughs> I think more likely it, w it was his wife. He was in the back, like, lying in bed listening to the Beach Boys, thinking of, like, <laughs> horrific things he can do to his characters. He's like... I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs>
Junji, this time, this man tweeted you, Oh California, baby. <laughs> He's such a happy dude. I love him. I love watching him in cat Something in the USA. <laughs> Rhonda, Rhonda, help, help, help me, Rhonda. Rhonda, help me, Rhonda. get her out of my heart. Is and then he's like, I should do a story where a man is miniaturized and placed in a, or where a woman is miniaturized and placed in a man's heart. Is and it, she has to eat her way out. His headphones are this big. <laughs> <laughs> he has like the 70s like yeah. stereo headphones, yeah. It depends on what you like about this movie. I, I think that some people who like the Predator aspects will like the other Predator movies, but they've probably already seen it. I wouldn't Last recommend... Last of the Mohicans. See, I don't... Oh, such I, a good movie. It, it is, but I wouldn't recommend it based because off of based the, off of this movie. Yeah. Well, I think I think this the Native American stuff in this movie is something that's actually kind of unique to it mm -hmm. because it is a very impressive like amalgamation of like historical fiction and sci-fi which is something that's very I think unique unto it. So like really I think this movie is it's hard to compare it to anything because it, I think it's pretty unique as to what yeah. it does. If you are interested in a Native American culture, I mean there's Several movies out there, several thousand more books that do it better. Upcoming on the Horror of Babylon, uh, this Sunday we are uh, reviewing one of my favorite Stephen King novels. One of his most famous, but also I would say one of his most underrated, Cujo by Stephen King. And then next Sunday we are reviewing the film adaptation, Cujo. <laughs> from 1983 then our next two Sunday episode or our next two Thursday bonus episodes and Daniel I, I'm gonna ask you this now because I have it on the schedule that we're gonna do a watch along of Willy's Wonderland yeah. like we did with the ramen girl should we do that or should we just watch it and then do like a regular like episode uh, that's up to you I mean I don't care <laughs> like I, I liked what we did with the ramen girl episode it was just kind of a big undertaking then, then we could just watch it and view that. I'm fine. Them. I'm fine either way. Yeah, I'm also fine either way. So. Okay, I'll make Kef pick later. Mm -hmm. And then the next Thursday, May 30th, we are finally watching Freaky, which is the modern day slasher, which was inspired from Cherry Falls. Oh boy, I can't wait. Which apparently has Vince Vaughn in it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to watch the Vince Vaughn slasher movie. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, do my Vince Vaughn. When he tries to do a serious role, he just has his mouth gaping open. I don't know if I've ever made it through a movie where he's not, where it's not a comedy yeah. with Vince Vaughn in it. I think there's a movie with him in it called like a cool dry place, mm. and I'm, that's always how I've thought is Vince Vaughn is a cool. He's dry a cool place. dry place. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think he just kind of peaked with dodgeball, and it's just like been downhill ever cool. since. <laughs> We're in the nostalgia age. Just do dodgeball too. <laughs> dodgeball. <laughs> I would watch dodgeball too so hard. <laughs> Oh, it, it's just for all the Bill Dotrieve jokes. <laughs> going down the floor, going down like a sweet muffin. Oh, 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 I ruined Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah. You for your people? Yeah. Up there? Oh, yeah, dear. okay, so uh, Drake and I are sitting at the table playing uh, Lorcana, and Emma and Beck are watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, or as Drake calls it, the Nine-Nine. As he should. <laughs> <laughs> and we're watching it. And I just, I kind of look up at the corner of my eye and I see Steven Root. And I go, it's Bill! <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I say, Drake, look, it's Bill from King of the Hill. And Beck so, says, no, it's not. I said, close your eyes and listen. <laughs> <laughs> and Emma said, you ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, Ryan probably runs out to his porch and does the biggest victory screech he could possibly muster. It was fun. <laughs> Yay. I did actually run. They still love the show. But you know who else is fun? Our, Our patrons. <laughs> including Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and Logan, the, the Full Metal, metal patron, patron, and, and Ben the, the Fourth, Breaching of Hope, and, and Mia the Fifth. The Rainmaker. She makes her rain. And Sierra the Sixth, the Keyblade Patron. Wubba, 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 wubba. Wubba, 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 wubba. And thank you to Forestman Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mall Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can shop online at fourhorsemen.tcgplayerpro.com or you can, uh, and if you make it into the store, say hello to the guy who's cosplaying as Captain Hook. 
uh, Ronald the Third, Grampus of Christmas, and when he yells Shmi at you, just pretend to be Shmi. And trust me, uh, you should. When he asks, but I'll tell you when he he says double the powder and shorten the fuses. It does not mean what you think it does. All right, all right, guys. Thank you for watching. Pray. I pray that you both had a wonderful time. I had the best time. <laughs> Oh, what's that uh, that quote from Matthew Perry about the Indian woman? Oh, in Almost Heroes. Yeah, what? God. I'll, pu I'll put it. I'll put it in here. Yeah, I've been meaning to say it like the whole time. I was gonna hex and go. I'm gonna go something Indian. Woman. I was actually gonna make a joke about looking through the the telescope. The telescope. <laughs> and, but I was like, I'm pretty sure this girl in this movie is supposed to be like 16. So I don't know. Every time I think about the. Her husband, wherever he was, I was Eugene just, Levy. Yeah, yeah, I always just look at things. Just like, man, it's like great value, Danny Trejo, <laughs> which is weird because I thought Danny Trejo was great value, Danny Trejo. Mm. Actually, he's great value, Antonio Banderas. I think is how that works. Thanks. Anyway. Stay tuned for our socials and stay scary. Yeah, stay scary, nice folks. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that the Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Stay scary. Mm.